What's going on guys? This is Dean with Black Box No Code. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to integrate OpenAI's new ChatGPT API into Bubble, um, completely without writing any code um, or even understanding it. So, um, so yeah, for those of you that don't know, um, I think over the past few days, OpenAI released their new ChatGPT API um, they also released the Whisper API, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but um, I haven't seen anyone integrating this online. I know I couldn't find anything when I tried looking it up, so I just uh, figured it out myself, and it's pretty straightforward um, compared to the, uh, you know, the other models, the GPT-3 models they had, um, but it is slightly different. I'm sure by now a lot of you guys have already used ChatGPT, obviously, if you're viewing this video. It's really great for chatbot applications. You can see some of the use cases they have on their website. Whereas GPT-3, um, you know, it, it can be fine-tuned to, um, you know, I guess a wider range of tasks, if you will. Um, and one thing to mention, and GPT-3.5 Turbo, that is the official model of the ChatGPT. Uh, product and you can even see that the price per tokens it's priced at a tenth of what GPT-3 would cost which is just crazy um, crazy cheap so yeah let's actually uh, get into building it so if we come into their documentation uh, I've already gone ahead and created an OpenAI account but you can you can read a little bit more about um, the completions they give you some examples I definitely recommend you guys try it out in their playground um, but you can see kind of these sample requests that we make as well as the response that they uh, give us but essentially for those of you that have used GPT-3 um, again it's very similar to how we create a request except that you can see that in our messages here we're actually given an array right um, and you can see that we kind of have roles associated with it uh, so again I'm not going to get into the kind of finer details of all this. I really recommend you guys come and uh, read through this. But um, essentially, it's, um, you know, as I mentioned before, it's great for chatbot applications, and it can even include conversation history, with w which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. Um, so again, let's get into actually building this with Bubble, right? So once we're in our Bubble editor, you're going to want to come here to create an app. And then uh, we're not going to start it from a template. We'll just call this um, chat GPT demo YouTube. If that's available, we'll just go ahead and create it. And um, so once we're in our bubble editor, the first thing that we're actually going to do is set up the API aspect of it. So come into the uh, plugins here. It's kind of hard to see behind this. Um, play button there but come into the add plugins install the API connector um, click add another API we'll just call this open AI um, we're going to add shared headers so this is essentially how we're going to authenticate that we hey you know we're actually allowed to request what we're trying to hit right we're actually allowed to make requests to open AI and get a response back so if we come back to the documentation and then we scroll down a little bit into the um, chat in the API reference section, um, you can see in the example request they give us, we can see the headers associated with that. Um, so let's actually just go ahead and copy that over. First one is going to be the content type, which is just going to be JSON format and then the actual authorization. Which is going to be a bear token. And to get that value, um, you just want to come to your OpenAI account into the view API keys and then just create a new secret key and then paste it back in there. And make sure when you're uh, pasting it back in there, make sure you put a space between the word bear and then you can just paste it over like that. But yeah, once we have that added, uh, we can actually come into the specific API call. We'll just call this chat completion. 
and then make sure this is a post request. Um, use it as an action, um, which you'll see why here in a sec. And then the actual endpoint we're going to hit is uh, if we come back to the documentation, chat, the example request is chat completions endpoint right here. And then um, let's just look at uh, the parameters. Let's paste that here. Um, and then, so right, actually guys, right now, if we go ahead and make a request, it should return us um, some type of value. So we're gonna initialize it here. And if we look in the raw data, in the choices, messages, content, we can see that uh, we're actually getting a response, which is pretty cool. Um, but obviously we're going to wanna make this dynamic, right? We wanna make it dynamic so the user types in uh, ultimately what they want. So we'll just call this prompt here. And you can see um, we've given the role as the user, um, the end user, the person using your application. And you just want to make sure you uncheck private here. So we can actually test it with whatever input we want. So we can say, how do I get started with no code? And then if we reinitialize it, uh, we should get a response. There we go. If we come back, oh wow, it actually wrote us a pretty long response. Um, but yeah, uh, so you can obviously see this is what we're going to want to use, except rather than us typing this, we're going to want to have the user type this from the front end. So let's actually get to building that. Um, I'm going to keep this a very simple UI. Um, so we'll just do a few things. We'll change the background color to kind of a dark gray. And then... Um, Let's see, ask chat GPT. Let's make this a heading. Mm. Um, center the text. Let's change that font. God, I hate that color. Cool. And then. Um, we will just add a simple kind of input field. We'll center that. Um, I guess we can make it just fixed width and height for now. Let's change the colors really quick on that. Cool, cool. And then let's just add a simple button. And we'll just say ask for now. Um, center that, we'll add a bit of a margin on the top. Now let's do 20 for now. Let's also change that color. kind of a greenish, we'll just do that for now. So yeah, if we preview it, cool. Um, alrighty, and then the actual text part of this, um, which is where the response will go. We'll just call this generated response, we'll center this again. Um, and then we'll also add a state. So once we get the response, then we will fill this in. So we'll call it generated response text. So um, now let's get into the actual workflow. So if once the user clicks ask, we essentially need to take the input that's here and send it to the back end, back to OpenAI. So if we click start edit workflow, um, 
let's search up our API, except rather than the prompt, we don't want to hard code it. We want to insert a dynamic element. And uh, from our input A's value, I believe that's what we called it, obviously. Yeah. So the next action we're going to want to add is setting the states, um, setting the state of an element. So if you guys remember that text kind of field that we had called generated response, we want to you know, set whatever value we get from OpenAI into this field. Um, so, but what value do we want to set? So the result of step ones, um, choices, and then scroll down until you see each item's message content. And then for now, we'll just do the first item. So it's, if you guys remember, when we initialized that call, it gave us quite a big um, object, but obviously we're not going to want everything from there. We're only going to want the actual content um, to display to the user, as you guys see here. So that's essentially what we're doing, kind of parsing all of that data. And then last step is if you come into the design, um, we don't want to just display edit me. We want to insert a dynamic element and um, we're going to display the generated responses. Um, yeah, the generated response. So now we're actually ready to uh, test it. So, uh, but before we do that, I do want to change the font color um, from that kind of ugly blue just to a really white, um, visible white color that we can test. So we can actually ask it anything. And again, uh, please excuse this terrible UI, but um, we can ask, what's the best way to learn how to code? And if we click enter or click ask, it should give us the response. And it may take a while because we didn't have the max token set, so it could give us a pretty big response, but um, I guess we'll see. Yeah, so there we go. Um, you can see it's pretty similar to what uh, ChatGPT would provide us if you guys ask something like this. Um, obviously, we could be more descriptive uh, or even tweak with the uh, endpoints or kind of tweak with the parameters of the API. But you can see just in a few minutes, guys, we can we already have a workable product, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can ask it, obviously, any question, whatever inputs you want or you could even add more inputs or a multi-line input to uh, kind of fine tune it, I guess, to your user. So uh, yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was informative a little bit, uh, but thank you.